Okay, like um, Emily said, my name is Jamie David, and I am one of the education project managers for Bernina. And um, I worked really closely on the Overlocker project for the last five plus years. So um, yeah, I just I, I'm excited to share what machines can do. I'm a garment sewing enthusiast, I would say. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. I just wanted to bring to your attention that it is National Overlocker Month. And we have some really amazing deals going on at our Bernina dealers this month. So check with your Bernina dealer, see um, what some of those specials are. And I know we only have one more day left this month. So there is one, one day, well today, I guess two, one and a half days, however you wanna look at it, but you got a little bit of time to connect with your local dealer and take advantage of some of the sales that are going on on the machines and the presser feet and all of that. I also wanted to mention that on our We All Sew blog, this is the Bernina blog, we have a garment sew along going on with Jen Veeman of Grainline Studios. She is the expert for our campaign for the launch of our new overlockers. And she designed two patterns. The top that you see there is over a knit jersey dress. So you can make that top as a knit top or a woven top. And she's going through basically all three versions of this on the We Also blog right now. And I think today just launched day five. So they are she's getting into actually constructing. Uh, but a lot of the previous blogs on this were about preparing the fabrics, what fabrics to select, how to how to read a pattern, and some of those helpful tips. I also wanted to just talk a little bit about Bernina's overlocker history and um, kind of you know where we've been and where we're where we're at now which is a pretty exciting time for us at Bernina but we launched our first overlockers back in 1983 as this Burnett brand and I know a lot of people on here said they have overlocker experience so maybe some of you recognize this machine um, there was the I think it's the 234 and the 334 um, but it's the little machine up there in the right hand corner and they were a great robust machine and um, just adds a lot of enhanced abilities to your sewing studio when you add a serger to the mix. Since that time, there's been evolution over the years and there's been a lot of really unique Bernina features kind of added to our overlocker machines. And some of, the, some of my favorite things I've just mentioned here um, we started putting on a swing out presser foot. So some of our models will have the presser foot that you press and you can swing out. And that gives you a little more space and control and e ease of putting the thread underneath there. Um, at Bernina, we like to have ease of use and make things really a luxurious, nice premium experience for you. Um, we also had a multi-purpose foot that we developed early on, and this foot was really great because you could make piping with it, you can install zippers with it, and it has many purposes and functions just to enhance even the features that um, are natural to the machine. Another feature that we introduced with some of our machines is a, an idea called micro-thread control, and this is a fine-tune adjustment of where basically the looper threads meet at the edge of the fabric. So this is about giving you the ability to control the, you know, to detail where those loopers meet along the edge of the fabric. And this was introduced on several of our machines um, pretty early on. In the early 1900s, we had this model that's in the middle here, that's a 2000 series. And this was our first machine to have a DC motor and a free arm. And these things have come back into some of our models um, that we currently have. But I love having a DC motor on an overlocker because it makes it feel much more like a sewing machine. And a DC motor is just it's direct current. It gives a little bit more of that stitch by stitch control. So a, a smoother operation when you press on the foot control in terms of um, being able to control that speed and, and the way that the machine feels. And of course the free arm is what we have on our sewing machine when you're sewing in the round. Um, of, of about five years ago, um, maybe 
yeah, probably four or five years ago, we introduced the L460 and, and I was brought on to the Bernina education team at this time and helped to launch this machine. So I'm really pretty attached to the L460 and the L450, its companion machine. And this was a game changer moment because this was our first machine where we actually, the 460, where we installed the freehand system. So those of you that are Bernina users, you know about the freehand system. This is the knee lifter component that, that's on your sewing machine. So you can rock over with your knee, have your hands free, and you can um, lower that presser foot or, or raise it um, to just give you a little bit of extra control about how you use it. And so a lot of people I know, myself included, when I first started using sergers, I would um, work with them and I'd be having my hands and I'd try to put my fabric underneath. And I was like, if only this machine had a free hand system. So it's it's really a, a nice feature to have on an overlocker. And then this past year, 2020, was the launch of a machine that we have been working on at Bermina for a very long time. And it's really special, this machine, because this is the first one that we have designed, developed, and manufactured in our Bernina facility. So we have worked with manufacturers before to help us with our machines and make them what we wanted for Bernina. But this is the first one that is truly built in our factories. And these are the L850 and the L890. And I know you've probably seen some of the buzz about these. Some of you probably have this machine or one of these machines already. Um, they're amazing. And I'm really excited for you to get to try them. So if you have a chance in the next couple of days to go to your dealer and check out one of these machines, I'd, I'd recommend doing so. The big thing, of course, about them is that they have this feature called the one-step Bernina air threader. There's a lot of air threading sergers in the market these days, and I'm really happy to say that we also have some air threading sergers. This particular one is controlled with the foot control. So on our machine, you will have your hands free for threading the um, thread into the threading nozzles, and you'll press on the foot control to activate that air threading. It's a really cool feature. It also has, you can see on the 890, well, it's only on the L890, I should say, the L850 does not have a touch screen, but the L890 has a centrally located color touch screen. So if you are a Bernina sewing machine user, this feature is familiar. The icons are different, of course, because it's an overlocker, um, but it's like this is the kind of the way that you navigate and select stitches through this machine. And it, there's all kinds of built-in tutorials and help. It gives you all the preset tensions so you don't have to memorize or write down tensions. Um, there's just a lot of really amazing features packed into that navigation. And I think if you've been using a Bernina, you'll find that it's it's familiar and it's easy for you to use. It it also, because there's so much help, it almost teaches you, you know, it's like having a teacher right there with you. So it teaches you how to use the machine. Um, we have what we call one path threading. So it is a color coded thread path. There's not a lot of switching around between stitches, each stitch group is gonna follow one defined path. So all the stitches within that group, you're gonna be able to kind of use the same threading path. Um, it's very clearly labeled and marked and really easy to use. You can thread this machine in any order. And I mentioned the 2000 series from the 90s had a free arm and we haven't had a free arm on our overlocker since then but the new eight series does have a free arm. So if you remove that slide on extension table, you will be able to expose that free arm. So when you're doing cuffs, collars, even just hemming, if you're in the cover stitch mode, um, hemming in the round, anything that you're doing kind of in that circular round um, shape, you can do around that free arm and it really makes it just a little easier to maneuver um, your fabric through the machine. Of course, the freehand system is on this machine. We also have nine millimeter cutting width, um, which is great, so you can get super wide stitches. I've got some um, examples to show you of that in the presentation a little bit later. And one of my favorite features, the swing out presser foot. So the swing out presser foot was on some of the models, and then when we launched the 450 and 460, the presser foot does not swing out to the left, but I am happy to say that it is back with the L8 machines. 
So I'm going to continue just a little bit and talk about all the machines that we have available because sometimes I don't think people realize just how many overlockers we have in our portfolio of machines. And we have these amazing Burnett machines. These machines do a great quality stitch. It's a robust machine. It's reliable machine. And the price is really great, um, especially great this month while we have some specials on these machines. So if your dealer has them in stock, even better. Um, but there is several options here. And you see four of them and you're probably looking at your screen and you're like, they pretty much look the same. Uh, you know, visually, yes, they do pretty much look the same, but they are all very different machines. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these machines. The B42, the one on the left, the far left, is a cover stitch only machine. Um, some people think we do not have a cover stitch only machine in our line, but we do actually have this Burnett, which is a cover stitch only machine. Um, and that cover stitch is a machine that does not use the cutting knife. And so there's no cutting knife on the B42 because it's not trimming the fabric like a standard overlocker would. It is for hemming, basically, it's that t-shirt hem. It's the, the hem that you see at the bottom of, the, of your shirts. It can also do a chain stitch. So if you're just using one needle and the looper, it's a chain stitch. That makes it work very much like a sewing machine. So you can do things like top stitching and decorative embellishments, because remember, you're not cutting anything with this machine. One of, I think, the best things about the B42 is that that looper threads from the front of the machine. So it's really easy to see what you're doing. It's a lay-in tension dial. You raise the presser foot, those tensions are open, and then you just follow that one path for the looper. There's only one looper in that machine. So it's really easy to know what you're threading. And um, I think, like I said, stitch quality is, is great. Um, the next machine would be the B44. And if you move up to that one, you'll notice that the um, loopers right here, the upper and lower looper, you know, over here is the purple looper, but it pretty much looks the same. But here you've got your four threads. So this is a four, three, or two thread overlock machine, and it does not do cover stitching. So it, it has the cutting knife. It is going to do all of the stitches that your standard overlockers do, which is your primary, your overlocker, or your overlock seams, um, your flat lock stitching, rolled hem stitching, and any combination that you want to make between those. The B48 right here, so you notice now we've got an extra thread dial over here, or tension dial over here for that cover looper again. So you have three loopers on the B48, and that is a combo machine. When I say that it's a combo machine, that means that it can be converted between overlock and cover stitch. So when you convert a machine between overlock and cover stitch, you would lock down the cutting knife. You would switch out the knife cover insert so that it's a flat bed and you would lock the upper looper because you don't want the upper looper moving over the stitch plate for cover stitching. And then of course, you're gonna have to move your needles. So the main thing that you'll notice on any combo machine is that you have a lot of needle positions and um, you have a lot of setups that you have to do between the two functions. But if you're short on space, you want one machine that does all the things, this is the machine to get. And there are um, some stitches that you can only do on a combo machine, those combo stitches, which is a version of a chain stitch with an overlock in the same action. Um, last but not least, and a relatively new machine and somewhat maybe living in the shadow of our L8 series is the B64. And this is an amazing overlocker. It is a two thread, three thread, four thread overlocker. But the nice thing about the B64 is there's a ton of features like our Bernina machines and it's an air threading overlocker. So we have an air threading overlocker option in our Burnett line as well. Um, you can also see from this image, I chose this one particularly, it does have a nice big slide on extension table that comes standard, but it also has that free arm. It also has micro thread control and it also has that free hand system. So a lot of, like I said, 
really great Bernina features packed into that model as well. All right, and then in our Bernina over locker category, we have kind of two sections of machines, the L4 um, overlockers and the L8 overlockers. And like I said, the L450 and the L460 are the machines, my very first machines that I launched when working with Bernina. So I'm, they're very near and dear to my heart. Um, the 450 and the 460 are very similar machines. The primary difference between them being that the 460 has a DC motor and the 450 has an AC motor. Um, because the 460 has the DC motor, it takes the Bernina power cord and foot control that you're used to having from your sewing machines. Um, we also have that free hand system on this machine. That is not a feature that you can put on the 450. Um, they are your standard two, three, four thread overlock machines. So no cover stitch here, no combo machine in this particular line of machines. Um, just some very good, I don't want to say basic because maybe that's not the right word, but some very good utilitarian, solid, sturdy sewing or, or overlock machines. Um, so if you're new or you're, you're looking for a place to start and you want a lot of great features, but you want your, your price point a little lower, this is this is a great place to be. It's 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 a nice machine. It's a nice experience, um, and it is not air threading, but I promise you, it's very easy to thread. And then, of course, the star of the show, I think, here is our L8 machines, the air threading machines that I was talking about, with the free arm, the free hand system. Um, we have two machines in this line, the or yeah, this series, the L850 and the L890. The L850 is your basic two thread, three thread, four thread overlock machine. So you see it's got the same kind of lay in tension dials that you've seen on all the machines that I'm showing you. And but it's big and it has the air threading and it has also this really great needle threader. So I really like having that built into the 850. And then the 890 is a very um, the top of the line machine and it's got kind of all the bells and whistles so it is a combo machine so this machine like the b48 will do all of your cover stitch and chain stitch stitches as well as all of your overlock stitches and those combination stitches that i was talking about so if you're the type of person that wants to have it all and wants to have that ease of use having that computerized navigation um, this machine really has a lot to offer All right, so now I'm going to kind of, I've, I've given you an introduction to the machine. I'm sure you probably have a lot of questions about the machines and you can pop those over in the chat box to Emily. I'll be happy to answer machine questions um, at the end, but I just wanna share with you a lot of what I like to use an overlocker for, which is garment sewing. Of course, you can use them for a whole lot of things um, in terms of home deck and even quilting and things like that. It is a machine that has a lot of versatility, but a lot of people think of it when it comes to sewing clothing. And because it makes the work fast and it's really great for working with knits. And when I was putting together this program, I realized most of what I have to share with you is knits. So it's like, I, I promise that you, you can sew with wovens on this machine. And I have a few woven projects in here, but most of it and most of my sewing is knits. But um, a great place to start is just making t-shirts. And I have several t-shirt patterns that I love. These are probably my top three personal favorite um, patterns. This sewing workshop ET that's shown in the image here, I have probably made this shirt, honestly, like I usually make them in batches. I, I don't think I just make one. I usually make <laughs> probably at least three at a time. Um, I probably have 20 of these shirts um, and it's great because sometimes I will just take my knit scraps left over and patchwork them and so like make a yoke um, and, and sew the, the fabrics together and then make the shirt because it doesn't use very much fabric. I like the silhouette. It's got a little bit of shape. It's got a rounded hem. It's got kind of that high neckline, little short cap sleeves and it's a great t-shirt by the sewing workshop. Um, another favorite is 
by grain line, it's this LARP tee. And you can see on the pattern there that there's a lot of different neck options and then sleeve options. So you can kind of build your own adventure style t-shirt using that pattern. And this booklet to this Knit Essentials booklet by Allison Glass and Karen Lepage is a really good step-by-step um, um, directions on measuring yourself and making your own pattern. So the the premise behind this is that you are using your measurements and you're drafting a basic base pattern to then make all your t-shirts off of. And I've made some shirts from there too, and I really like it. There's a lot of same kind of concept, a lot of sleeve options and length options and stuff like that. And and um, so that's where you can get creative. The basic seaming of a t-shirt is the same for all of them. And th the best thing about an overlocker is this four thread overlock seaming stitch, right? You've got two needles, you've got the loopers encasing the edge, two rows of needles that's really strong. So you, if you know if one gives way, you've got the other one. It's a stretchy seam and the machine is cutting the edge and finishing the edges with that looper when it's sewing. The other wonderful thing about sewing knits and using an overlocker is a feature called differential feed. And this is on all of our overlockers that I talked about. And it's pretty standard across the board. If you have a serger or overlocker, then it's most likely got differential feed. Some of the really old ones may not have it, but differential feed is the ability to set the rate at which your feed dogs move. There's two sets of feed dogs on an overlocker and you can set the rate at which they move together and you can control stretch that way. So sewing knits on a sewing machine, if you've done that, you'll notice at the end, the seam is all wavy. It's really hard to control that because as you sew it, it stretches it, and then it's putting the stitches in stretched fabric. So with differential feed, we can have that front feed dog moving more fabric than the back, and that is gonna keep it from stretching out as it is sewn together. So you can see um, in my image here, that you know a really stretchy knit when you just sew it at a one-to-one -one ratio sometimes has this wavy edge and if you set that differential feed to 1.5 you will get a nice flat seam and that is key to your side seams of your your shoulder seams of sewing knits for your t-shirts finished details you have options and this is one of the things i think that people get confused about is that Sometimes they think that all sergers will do this stitch, this cover stitch, because I, you know, I remember people coming in to the store to want to buy sergers so that they could hem their t-shirts. And I was like, well, you really need the cover stitch. So we need to get you a machine that has that or is just the cover stitch machine. And all of our cover stitch machine options, so that's on the combo machines that I mentioned or that B42, these will have three needle positions and that gives you three varieties of cover stitch that you can make um, you can do with three needles and have three rows of top stitching or you can remove one of those needles and have a wide set cover stitch seam or you can do a narrow and the narrow is really nice if you've got thin knits um, or you just want it to look a little more um, delicate you know sometimes it's just an aesthetic choice um, and that is the common hem finish that you see on t-shirts. And so it's nice because it's got the looper on the back and so it's stretchy. It's gonna stretch much better than what you could get with a twin needle on your sewing machine. Um, and it's just that professional finish. So a lot of people, when they get to a certain level in their garment sewing, this is the seam finish that they want. I like to also use that cover stitch around my neckline. So you'll serge your binding on or your band onto the top of your t-shirt. And then you've got that serge seam. I like to run that, that cover stitch right over that serge seam and then it keeps that flat um, against my skin. And it's just, I just like that kind of tidy finish. Another thing that I like to do, and this you can do on any of your, your standard overlockers. So this is a flat lock seam and you can do this so that it looks a little more blind or you can do it so that you see those um, needle threads. So a flat lock is basically an unbalanced, unbalanced overlock stitch that allows you to pull one fabric on top of the other, or if you're not trimming the edge, like in my cuff here, I was not cutting anything. 
you can just kind of pull that seam apart and then you'll see that because your needle tensions are super loose it pulls and so that's what you're seeing here um, is the reverse side of that flat lock where those needles are and this is a um, very common finish in ready to wear clothing so i like to put it in the stuff i make too because i can um, I've used it, I use it mostly on my cuffs and my hems, but you can, I mean, I did here get a little adventurous and I put the neck binding on my t-shirt um, using that stitch also. This is a fun upcycle that um, my colleague and friend who works with us here at Bernina Haley, she did this project from a ready to wear shirt and she just cut the sleeve, it was a long sleeve, and she made this really cute um, bow cuff hem um, around the sleeve and it's just a, a different way of finishing the bottom of a sleeve and it's like sometimes we forget that it's like you can just take a folded band and make a band around the cuff for the bottom of a t-shirt too and she did all this on the overlocker it's a great project if you want to try that free arm um, and yeah the details for that are on the we also blog as well so if you're wanting to know how she did that you can find the directions there. So not too far away from a t-shirt is a sweatshirt. So I found that I've made a lot of like sweatshirts in the last year, especially. And these are kind of the, the top three things that I think I've, I've made a lot of um, recently. So of course the Grainline Linden sweatshirt is a typical raglan sleeved sweatshirt. And it's just kind of that um, around the house sweatshirt and you can get dressy with the different fabrics that you put in this you can do different seams and stuff like that to it but it's a, it's a good basic classic sweatshirt is how I should say that the so house seven pattern the toaster sweater there there's two versions they are very different they're not the same really at all but you get two options with this pattern I've made both of them I like them because this to me is a little bit more dressy casual so I can I feel like I can wear these to work and get away with it because they're pretty nice especially some of the textiles I've put in them and then not really a sweatshirt but kind of related is the blackwood cardigan and this has been a year of layers and cardigans for me so I really like this pattern by Helen's Closet. I've only made this once, but I thought it was a really great project for sergers. So here's my three. Um, these are recent makes for me. So th this is stuff that I did during um, the COVID lockdown. So it was my sew at home wardrobe here. Um, those two on the left are the toaster sweater version one and two. And then the one on the right is my Blackwood cardigan. And that is a long cardigan. Um, I did put the pockets on that was put on with a sewing machine, although I could have used my chain stitch to do that. But with the toaster sweater, um, this image on the right, I used, it's a rib knit. This is a really stretchy rib knit fabric. So a lot of people would just use this as the cuff, but I thought it was cool and I wanted to use it as the whole um, body of my sweater. And because it's so stretchy, I wanted a seam that had a little bit more control to it. So I opted to use this five thread combo stitch. And this is a, a stitch that's on that combo machine. And what it does, you can see really clearly here, is sews that chain stitch and at the same time sews a overlock stitch along the edge. And you can select on the 890, if you want a wide or narrow overlock, if you want a three thread or a two thread overlock um, in that combination. But the chain stitch has some stretch, but it is a little more stable. And for this seam, especially because it has a vent, so I had to stop and then I had to press this up, but I promise you, I, I made this whole thing on my overlocker. So I did chain stitch and, and do some stuff like top, top stitching wise um, using my chain stitch but I did have a lot of control with the 890 and this particular seam. So I know it's hard to see, but you can kind of see um, the chain stitch here and the overlocked seam to the right. And the nice thing is like, you could do this with two machines. You just have to do it in two parts. So the nice thing about the combo machine is it's one action and done. So you're saving half of your time.
And then, like I said, I use the chain stitch. So if you see this picture, you can see my needle and my foot here. This is my L890 overlocker and I'm using it very much like a sewing machine here. So I had made my miters, I surged my little miter, I surged my edges, surged my miter, pressed it, and now I'm basically just top stitching with a chain stitch on this um, hem finish of the uh, toaster sweater. There is also like that, it has a little bit of a funnel neck that folds down, so it's like kind of almost a built-in facing the way that neckline works. And because that seam is, is curved like this and it has to kind of go in, I used just the chain stitch here. All of this got kind of pressed in and then I did like a little stitch in the ditch. Once this got pressed down in, I stitched in the ditch of that seam to hold that neck facing into the sweater. I, I love this sweater. I think it was really ingenious um, how the pattern was written. And again, I did the same chain stitch on the cuffs because that's how I finished my uh, bottom of that sweater. But one thing that I think is really great to do on sweatshirts is to use your cover stitch and show the reverse side of the cover stitch. So you see that like more athletic looking seam on the top. So on my um, Linden sweatshirt here, I have just exposed the looper side to the outside. So you can make these kind of creative choices when you're planning your garments. Another thing that's great, especially if you have a knit that's kind of doesn't have a lot of recovery, so maybe it stretches and it's not always gonna stretch back to the same um, rate, or you just need a little bit more stabilization, is that you can stabilize a seam by adding clear elastic right into your serge. So usually when I'm doing this, I'm doing a four thread overlock, um, several of our presser feet will have a little bit of a tape guide that helps you hold this into the presser foot as it goes into that seam and you can just put your stitches right on top of that clear elastic. I love doing this, especially in shoulder seams where things get a lot more wear and tear. All right, so leggings, this is another very um, common thing that I've been making for a long time. And these are so fast on an overlocker. Um, two patterns, the J. Lee leggings, that 2920, that's the one that I used to make all the time. And then I've started making these Helen's Closet Avery leggings. They're more like a yoga pant. Um, the the J. Lee leggings are just pretty basic one, one piece kind of pattern. Um, but the uh, Helen's Closet has a, a gusset in the center and a little bit more seems to look like what you would buy for your, your yoga pants. Both great patterns. My most recent pair of Avery leggings, I used a two thread flat lock as my construction seam. And this is a really, it's it seems a little bit risky, but I promise you it's very sturdy and it's super stretchy. I used the Wonder Fill, and I think this is probably the key, is that you wanna use a stretchy thread in your looper. So there's a Wonder Fill soft lock, or just like maxi lock stretch or woolly nylon, one of those texturized stretched, um, stretchy threads in your looper will not only make this seam bold and visible, it will also give it that inherent stretch. And I've worn these a lot and washed them and they're holding up great. And um, I did put some overlock seams in the waistband when I added the waistband on, but pretty much everything here was constructed with a two thread flat lock. When you do a two thread flat lock, you block off the upper looper, you're only using the lower looper, and then you're using one needle, either your left or right needle. If you want a wide seam, it's the left. If you want a narrow seam, it's the right. So again, this is kind of that adding elastic. So into the waistband of those yoga pants, um, the Avery leggings, I use that clear elastic along the seam. This is not what the pattern says to do, but it's just kind of my own personal Jamie David hack to the pattern that I like. Um, it keeps me from having to sew elastic and then insert it um, into a channel, which is how the pattern calls, which is common too. Um, on my J. Lee leggings, I would basically sew my elastic into um, the size of my waist, you know, and then I would align it with my fabric and you can just serge it in. 
you don't have to really make a casing and be super fussy with it. It's like I would, you know, find my center points, match them up, stretch it, serge it in with a four thread overlock, fold it under, and then cover stitch it. Um, or go to my sewing machine and do like a little zigzag if you didn't have a cover stitch to just tack that elastic down and make your waist that way. Again, this is a great opportunity to use that reverse side of the cover stitch. So if you want it to look more like ready to wear, you can just show the looper side of that cover stitch on the outside in a couple places, and you can kind of pick up that detail. Um, I put a couple images here to show, the top image shows the two needle, so this is a wide cover stitch, and the bottom one is a three needle, so this is your triple needle cover stitch. Um, little bit different look just kind of how busy do you want that seam to look and and um, the aesthetic choice that you're going for this is just kind of an interesting seam and a stitch that i wanted to share because i don't know that a lot of people realize that you can do this stitch there's a super stretch stitch built or that you could do on your overlockers and it's unique in the fact that it uses just the lower looper so you block off the upper looper so you're only using one looper and so you can put your textured thread in there that's super stretchy and soft but it uses two needles so it's really strong in the fact that it's got two needles and i really wanted to use this on the swimsuit here and i did use it i used it on the bottom um hem here too where i sewed this to the lining and um and that probably has a little bit more actual performance but where I put it in this um, bra cup shape here then I came back and top stitched it so I really was not getting the maximum stretch of that super stretch stitch in that seam but it was just an opportunity to, for me to try using this stitch um, but I think it is effective in in the seam here this is stitched with a zigzag so there's more stitch down with a sewing machine zigzag um, I wasn't real confident at this point, like in terms of I, I wanted to, I'd never made this pattern. So I wanted to follow the directions closely. And, and there's a lot of sewing machine stuff that was needed to make this, but I've made a couple swimsuits um, since this one. And you really can maximize some of those really stretchy seams that you can create on your overlocker in a swimsuit. Um, I, I needed to put in here, like I said, some just basic edge finishing because one of the things that overlockers are great for is any sewing that you're doing for clothing just finishing those raw edges um, if you don't have this on a sewing machine you're zigzagging and you know that the fabrics will fray out but the overlocker is going to trim that edge encase it with thread and it's a really nice tidy seam and you can put fun threads in those seams too so here's a pair of jeans that i was constructing and i was sewing with a lot with my sewing machine and my overlocker for this but you can see that i put variegated thread in my looper and then i have used my sewing machine to basically finish constructing those i i do love that ginger jeans pattern from closet core i've made several of those too so that's kind of one of my go-to staple patterns it's 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 a great pattern she's got a great um sewing tutorial that you can purchase along with that where she teaches you how to make them and and um, it's not as hard as you might think so a few other kind of delicate things and different ways of using the overlocker because this could be like a whole nother section like we get into decorative techniques but like practical but delicate um, seaming and techniques so I have a couple patterns just like kind of what I'm calling intimate so some pajamas these lakeside pajamas um, the shorts that you see here and then this half slip which is just based on measurements and, and constructed there's some really nice techniques that I used on the overlockers to make these and one of them is the elasticator foot so we have this elasticator foot for our burnettes and our berninas and it's I love it because you can set that screw on top of the foot to stretch the elastic as it's putting it into something. And so it's it's doing the stretching for you at a more controlled rate. So along my waistband of that half slip, I use the elasticator foot on my cover stitch machine. So I actually cover stitched in my elastic as I was making this um, half slip. 
And there also is a really cool foot, this lace hemmer. I'd never used one of these, so I wanted to have a reason to use it. So I put a little lace hem on the bottom of this half slip. And this foot, you can kind of see it in the image below, but because it's clear, it might be hard to see. It basically has kind of two sides. And so you slide the, the lace in on one side and the fabric in on the other side. And it just holds it there in the right spot so that as it goes through, they're kind of going through in the same place. And then the machine can just cover stitch right on top to put the lace down. And then with my pajamas here, excuse me, I used a rolled hem to finish the edge. And this is this is kind of a delicate edge finish, I think. And I like to use the textured thread again, so I, I get a nice solid line. You can see here in this, this example that you can see how that fills in. So it has a really short stitch length. And what happens when you're doing a rolled hem is that you remove the stitch finger. So where the loopers would be held at the edge by the stitch finger in the formation of the stitch, now that fabric is allowed to kind of curl into the seam. So it just makes this kind of nice little um, delicate edge. And I put it on, this is a rayon. Some of you might recognize it's a rifle paper company fabric um, print um, rayon. And so it was really drapey. And um, I basically put that as the edge finish that rolled him as an edge finish. You can see right here, my overlock seam. So this is where I'm seaming the edges with the overlock stitch. Um, so very practical way to do it as well. And then I just, I have some slides on some miscellaneous details. So I'm com kind of coming to the end. And like I said, this is where like we could have a whole another like part two of like things that you could do in terms of embellishment. But I really think it's kind of fun to use the chain stitch on the machines that do cover and chain as a top stitch or a decorative embellishment. So here is some top stitching on the um, edge of a Morris jacket where I've sewn down the edge and I've used the looper side on the outside as a decorative embellishment. And here is, this is actually a coat that was made by my friend Karen. And she just used this chain stitch in a meandering line down the front um, like collar. It was like a long kind of collar band along this, this coat. And it's just a really nice different way of decorating um, your garments. Um, using the chain stitch as a top stitch. You can also use your overlock stitch as a graphic detail. So this top here was made by my friend Doris in Switzerland, and she has used thick threads as a four thread overlock. You can see just how wide those seams get. This is a nine millimeter seam. And she has just decided to kind of make those seams. And then she's come back and she has sewn them down um, I'm not sure if she she probably sewed them down with a, a cover stitch or a chain stitch, but you could also do that with a sewing machine. So the overlock is going to kind of seam it, and then you'll press it one direction and stitch it down. So she's got the decorative threads in there to make that really pop, and it's a nice way to embellish um, a shirt. And the other really nice thing, and it, ruffles are really popular right now, and I don't... I, I have purchased some things that have ruffles, but ruffles really weren't in my wardrobe before this year, I would say. So I'm excited to put to make some more ruff or to make some ruffled garments because I haven't really made any for myself. Um, but you can gather really easily on an overlocker, just like you use differential feed to get rid of a wave, you can use differential feed to create a gather. So if you crank it up, on a woven fabric, it's gonna actually smush that fabric together. And then if you add a gathering foot to the equation, you can put those ruffles onto a flat piece. So Doris also made this top here, um, and it's a really beautiful example of a ruffle. This is probably more common. What you would see is kind of the, the ruffled little girls things. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm seeing it more in fashion right now, and I'm excited to do some of that myself. And that is where I'm going to end the presentation today. So I'll ha I'm happy to see what kind of questions we've got. Welcome Great. back. We do Emily. have quite a few questions, Jamie, okay. for you. Uh, the first one is, uh, it's actually a two-part question. 
How much does the micro thread control change with each marking? Is this what you use to add slightly more width to your stitch? That is really pretty, pretty good, a pretty good explanation of it. So it micro thread control, what it does um, is it, it basically controls where your stitch finger. So the stitch finger is what's holding the loops to the edge of the fabric. And when you move micro thread control, you're moving that stitch finger to the left or the right. So you're going to have the most range on your middle cutting width settings. You'll be able to crank it more to the left or more to the right. Um, so it's it, visually when you're changing it, you're not going to notice a big difference, um, but it will make a big difference in your stitch. And the other thing that's great for micro thread control is if you, you're doing a stitch, you've got a really great looking overlock stitch and it's balanced but you've got kind of loops at the edge it's not quite snug to the edge of your seam you can you can use that micro thread control to kind of tighten up where those loops meet the edge of the fabric so it's fine tuned controlling so the range is fine tuned um, and it you'll just kind of have the most ability to move when you're in those middle cutting widths uh, the next question is, oh, got a lot of questions rolling in. Uh, let's see. Where do you find fabrics for leggings? What is your favorite go-to place? It's It changes because people run out of stuff. So I, you know, this is the hardest thing, I think, um, especially, you know, like it's, it is really hard to shop, shop for me for garment fabric online. Like I can look and see something that I like the way it looks, but without being able to tug on it and see how it stretches, and see how it feels. It's really hard for me to make a choice, but most places will send you swatches. Um, and I live in Kansas City and um, the sewing workshop, which, which makes the ET pattern and several other patterns um, is, is owned by Linda Lee. And she's a good friend of mine and really close to me. So that is probably where I get most of my stuff because I can get there pretty easily. Plus I trust her opinion. So I, you can just call those folks there. They'll send you swatches, they'll send you they'll give you advice, especially if you're making one of their patterns. But the leggings specifically, um, that fabric, because um, I, most patterns you'll find, th they've got something written as a blog somewhere, right? So the Avery leggings has a lot of stuff written as blogs on hacks and things like this. There's a blog post that gave several links of sources for fabrics. So that's where I started with those. And that particular, those purple leggings, that I just made that fabric came from Blackbird and that's a Canadian company and that is called they call it performance knit and so if you search performance knit you'll probably find some good options because that's got a lot of that recovery you want that negative ease but you want that to stretch and come back because you want it to kind of hold in place awesome. everybody needs a great pair of leggings these yes. days okay uh let's see as somebody did ask going along with leggings, can you use the stretch stitch in leggings as well, or is it best in undergarments and swimsuits? You could absolutely use that stretch stitch in leggings. And that I should have even said that in the uh, presentation because that would be probably the most logical place to use it to get the most bang for the function of, of that seam. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not gonna lay flat. I do like the flat lock in the leggings, I have to say, because it pulls the fabric one on top of the other and then I don't have that bulkiness of that seam like smashed into my, my body as much. So, um, but that super stretch stitch would be a great, a great option. Awesome. Uh, let's see, for using the, you mentioned the textured thread for the rolled hem on lingerie. Uh, were you referring to a uh, woolly nylon type of thread? Yes, woolly nylon is a, it's it's like a name brand. So that's a YLI company's um, thread name for that textured thread. And that is a nylon thread from them. So you have to watch that one because it's got a lower melting point. You can hit it with your iron and it will melt. Um, I've been using a lot of that. It's Wonderfill thread and the name of it is Soft Lock and it is excuse me, it is a polyester thread, so it doesn't melt as easy. It comes in some good colors. And then Maxi Lock makes a polyester kind of textured thread as well. It's a little shinier and it is called just Maxi Lock Stretch. So okay. 
those are my three kind of textured threads that I use like that, those texturized stretchy threads. Great. Uh, Melissa says her B48 is on order and she's super excited. Awesome. She's preparing her new toolbox for her surgery adventures. She's like, what is a good standard size of both clear and standard elastic in stock? Oh, so, you know, in the United States, it like our elastic gets a little bit wider than a quarter inch. So um, I, you know, I have a hookup in, in Switzerland that gets me a really nice <laughs> clear elastic from Switzerland that I like that that is just it is a little closer to that quarter inch mark. But that quarter inch is kind of what you're what you're gonna go for. Um, three eighths would work too, um, and you Dritz makes some and it's it's fine. Um, it's you know kind of you can find it probably different places and maybe if I searched more I'd be able to find the stuff that I that I like from Switzerland um, over here somewhere. But um, the clear elastic, you know, like I said, I like to put it in the shoulder seams and and different places like that. So. Okay. Hopefully uh, the next question, yeah, the next question is, what is the best foot to use to put in a zipper? I, I mean, the multi-purpose foot is the one that we have for the 450 and 460 that's great for zippers. The 850 and the 890 have a piping foot that's clear and it has that, it's got a little channel. And so what you do is the zipper teeth go into that channel and then your overlock goes along the edge. And so it just helps you put it in perfectly straight. Um, I think on Bernina USA um, Instagram, Gail um, Yellen just did a video of using the piping foot to put in a zipper. So that was like maybe just a, a couple days ago. So if you look on Bernina USA Instagram, you can probably find that video and see how it's done. But those those do make it easy. And you can do it with a standard foot too. It's just a little bit harder to control. It's nice having that groove that comes on the multi-purpose foot or the piping foot. And there is a piping foot also for the burnettes. Okay. Uh, Angela has been inspired to get her machine out of the box and get started. <laughs> Yay. What would you suggest a first simple project? You know, like pajama pants, honestly, would probably be a great place to start. The t-shirts, t-shirts are easy. I mean, the only thing about t-shirts is getting the stretch of the, the neck band. That's probably the hardest part. And then if you just have an overlocker, you know, and don't have the cover stitch, you have to make a choice about how you want to finish the hems. But um, your pajama pants, you can't go wrong. It takes a lot of yardage, so you have to have enough fabric. But I, when I was teaching sewing to little kids and older adults and every age, I would be like, like, let's start with an overlocker pajama pants because it's usually one, one shape, one seam, well, a couple seams, and then you put elastic in it and you go. And it doesn't really matter exactly how your pant hems are. I mean, but it's uh, a nice forgiving place to start. Okay. Uh, the next question that came through, it says, traditionally, um, let me see. How do you mark your fabric for serging clothes? Do you still make a snip in the fabric or do you do another technique? Ooh, that's a good question. Okay. Um, so thanks, Becky. <laughs> yeah. So this is, I mean, if if you haven't done garment sewing, um, a little trick, there they always have those little triangular shaped matching markings, you know, to match front to back and stuff like that. And um, when I first started sewing, like I'm, I'm self-taught. So it's like in, in early, I mean, the internet existed. So I would read a lot of things on there, but it's like, I, I always cut those backwards. So I, I would, anyway, it's like, you just kind of make a little snip into those triangles and then, you know, you can match those up. So if I'm seaming something with a standard overlock seam, you know, right sides together, the seam's all gonna be encased. And I know that my cutting width on my standard overlock seam is six millimeters, which is just about a quarter inch. I sometimes make that a little wider. Um, then that little notch, as long as you're not being excessive about how you notch that, is gonna be fine in that seam. If you're worried about that, I just usually, like with my leggings, um, when, where I did the flat lock seams, you don't want to do that because when you pull those apart, like you'll see those notches and then the fabric pulls and you can kind of see where you've snipped in underneath that seam. And so don't do that on a seam like that. 
I, I just use some kind of fabric marking tool, honestly, to mark the notch on there. Um, I could cut cut the triangles out backwards like I used to do when I started, but that's too fussy for me. I'm rotary cutting most things, so I don't go to that level of detail. So I just use like friction marking pins or a chalk marker or something that's gonna come off that you're not gonna notice um, is the way to go on that. But that's That's a good okay. observation because sometimes you would run into a trouble with that. And if you get too deep on cutting those notches, it's gonna be uh, an issue. Okay, let's uh, check out another question. Will there be more specialty feet for the L890? Yeah, there are. They're coming in. Um, some of your stores may have them already. Um, we've got a few. We've got the blind stitch foot, the piping feet. There's a gathering foot. There's an elasticator. There's a cording foot, a beading sequin foot. There's a clear foot, just a standard clear foot that's coming. It's not it's not here yet i don't even have one of those um but yeah we are working on trying to build up accessories you know how bernina has all the presser feet for our sewing machine so i'm hopeful that we're going to just keep chipping away at that and get more and more accessories and presser feet for our um l8 overlockers that we're that we're making so okay let's see can you put texturized thread through the air threader for the most part, you can get that to thread through the L8 overlocker really pretty easily. I tested a lot of threads and the upper looper is the shortest distance. And so most things will thread through that with no trouble. Um, the lower looper and the cover looper get a little longer and have a little bit more twists and turns. And so sometimes the thread's just too lightweight to get it all the way to the end. Um, so in those th those situations, just tie it to a standard thread and you can pull it right through because it doesn't make a real thick knot. Um, you could also make like a little thread cradle where you make a loop and you pull it through that way. Um, but sometimes it is just a little bit too light, especially if you get that woolly nylon extra. It's super fluffy. It's just too lightweight to really thread through an air threader um, serger. But but most most of them have I've had success with the the uh, soft lock and the maxi lock stretch going through the loopers on the eights, the L8s. Okay, let's, we have time for just two more questions. Sure. Uh, so let's do, how do you avoid tunneling in the cover stitch? Well, that would be, if you're getting a lot of tunneling, I would recommend going to that narrow cover stitch because maybe that's your textile issue, but there is a um, thing called knit stay tape and this, this is like a little bit of a stabilizer. So if you put that knit stay tape along the edge and then press your seam, you're gonna get a better a better result, just control wise. Um, so those are kind of, you, you know, it's always matching the textile to the technique. And tunneling does happen because there's space between the needles and there's a lot of stretch in that looper, but you could also control, because we have total stitch control on our machines, you can change the tensions. So you can try changing and loosening needle tensions and looper tensions so that you've got less um, tightness held between those two um, and, and see if that would help. But I, I will tell you the, the best way <laughs> is to use some of that uh, knit stay tape and most of them are fusible you can get them where they're so in you can get them where they're fusible I prefer the fusible it's about half an inch and you just iron it to the edge hold it up pressure him do your do your seam wonderful okay our last question for today is what size needle for sewing on delicate fabrics uh, for example rayon or silk so needles um, I'll try to be brief with this question because it can get technical here but the general answer to this is, you know, our, our machines take the same needles as your sewing machines. Now the L8s and the Burnettes are specified to a needle called an ELX705, which is spe a special serger needle. It's got a groove on the front and the back. And so it reduces the amount of friction on the thread um, when it's sewing at high speeds. And so if you get skip stitches and stuff, sometimes using a needle like that will help. And so these machines are sewn in specified to that needle, but you can use any kinds of needles that you're used to using. So if you you have a textile, you said rayon, right? Rayon and silk. Rayon and silk, you might want like a Microtex or something super sharp and kind of pointy um, to pierce that fabric. You know, so like whatever, 
needle you would use on your sewing machine, you can use that in your overlocker too, and then you'll adjust your tension. So always test sew, perfect the stitch the way you like it, and then go from there. But but yeah, you you have options. You you I would start. You could try the ELX. You might get actually a good result. It it's kind of a universal point, and so it does most things pretty well. Okay, that is all the time we have for today. So I just want to let everybody know that the webinar was recorded. So if you missed anything at any point or like to watch again for the future, it will be available in a few days on Bernita.com in the recorded webinar section. And we'll also have that PDF with uh, the links of all the patterns that Jamie talked about that you can download and hopefully get started on some fun new projects this uh, weekend. So thank you, Jamie, and we hope to see you at a future Bernita of America webinar. Bye. Bye.